Legend has it, there's a lost city in Louisiana, wiped off the map by a voodoo spell. The amount of damage was staggering. It goes down in history as one of the biggest catastrophes that Louisiana has ever had. Nobody stood a chance. Everybody thought they were going to die, and many did. The dead haunt the swamps and terrorize the living. Well, I'll never forget it for sure. It sounded like something screaming. The burning was so urgent, I knew it was the work of something that was very angry. But the true terror comes when the sky darkens, the winds pick up, and a century-old voodoo curse devastates the lives of thousands. It may have just looked like a storm, but they were dealing with something far, far worse. for near Louisiana is the home of a public fishing dock with one road and almost as many residents. But in the early 1900s, it was a thriving farming community until, according to legend, a voodoo priestess known to locals as Aunt Julia Brown practically wiped the town off the map forever. Maybe her curse is for real, because the only thing that is left now is the grave sites. Everything else is in the water. There's nothing else left. She was involved in voodoo, um, or had some kind of voodoo black magic power. If she did cast a spell, and that is what caused the hurricane, then it's pretty scary. Y'all watch your stepping up, come on now. As a tour boat captain, Tom Billiot knows the local swamplands and the legend of Julia Brown like the back of his hand. I knew the story before I even worked over here. Legend has it Julia Brown put a curse on the town of Frenia. Now, we've heard some weird stuff out here. There's some creepy stuff, you know. It's his job to tell tales about the area's haunted swamps. But for Tom, they're not just stories. It's real. People say Julia Brown's victims are buried right here in the swamp. And I can tell you from experience, it's definitely haunted down there in the swamps. I remember the night very well. It was particularly cool, and I just finished a nighttime swamp tour. And for the nighttime tours, we used tiki torches, uh, several flashlights, and a couple of solar lights off the trees. We put them all around the swamp, sometimes 25 or 30 of them. So once my last tour was over, oh, we'll have to go back and turn the lights out and pick up the torches. So I pulled the boat up there, and I got up to uh, blow the torches out. Usually there's all kind of noises in the swamp. Crickets and birds, a few frogs here and there. But as I got closer to the last two torches, it seemed to quiet down. Who's there? I blew one out, I blew the second one out. I'm standing there by myself in the pitch black darkness. It is so dark, you can't see your hands in front of your face. Who's there? <laughs> I've never heard anything like this before in my life. I've been all over the swamp. And most things you can identify, like, oh, that's a coyote, that's a raccoon, all oh, eating a rat or a rabbit. But this was something different. <laughs> this was more guttural thing. And I didn't want to wait to see what it was. I got out of there fast. To this day, Tom still isn't sure what he heard in the swamp that night. 
but based on experience, he has a pretty good guess. I think the screech I heard would maybe be the last cry you'd have right before you die. That's what it sounded like. It could have been one of the victims that's buried in the swamps here. And it's the story behind the storm that put those victims into the swamp that's at the heart of this local legend. Local historian and museum curator Wayne Norwood has been collecting morsels of Frenier's history for decades, and few people know more about the rise and fall of the town of Frenier better than him. Back in the 1800s, uh, the area around Frenier was a thriving community of farming. Settled by German immigrants in the late 1700s, the swampy soil proved to be ideal for growing cabbages, potatoes, and black-eyed peas. It was a good place to live, and they took advantage of the swamp that was there. They had the lake right there where they could uh, ship out stuff or receive stuff from the lake. So it turned out to be real uh, prosperous for them. And a major component of the farmer's success was the local weather. Louisiana meteorologist Hank Allen has made a career of following these unique weather patterns. Winds blew across Lake Pontchartrain from the east to the west, bringing lots of nutrients across the lake into the soil there, making it a very fertile region. The lake not only contributes to rich soil, but to the moderate climate as well. Being so close to the lake, it's really difficult to get temperatures below freezing. And so settlers at the time were able to grow crops pretty much year round without having to worry about freezing and crop damage. Between the mild climate and rich soil, Frenier is the perfect place for a thriving farming community. But there is one thing the area lacks, easy accessibility. Surrounded by the lake on one side and swamplands on the other, Frenier residents are essentially left to fend for themselves, even in the most dire times. It was in a deep swamp, so there was no roads. If somebody got sick, they had two options. Spend the 25 cents and ride the train to New Orleans to a doctor. And even then, the train might only run once or maybe twice a week. Or they could go to the local voodoo healer, an elderly woman named Julia Brown. Legend has it that uh, Julia Brown had some, some kind of uh, powers mixing up different herbs and things that she had got out of the swamp. Not only did she uh, practice uh, voodoo, she was a, a voodoo priestess. She had the power of voodoo. And in 1915, the local residents believed that Julia Brown not only used her voodoo powers to heal, but to bring about the end of Frenier permanently. Nobody stood a chance. She was far more powerful than anyone ever expected. <laughs> Legend has it, back in 1915, a voodoo priestess named Julia Brown placed a curse on Frenier, Louisiana. A curse that destroyed the area back then and continues to wreak havoc today. It's a story so infamous that the name Julia Brown sends shivers down local residents' backs. Who knows if a curse is real or not? But it's not nothing I want to play with, no voodoo or black magic or any of that. It's just something I don't want to deal with. Author and history buff Kalila Smith makes it her business to deal in things like voodoo. And back in Louisiana in the early 1900s, voodoo could be found in even the smallest of towns. The people of Frenier were very, very secluded and medical care was very scarce. Back then, if somebody in Frenier got sick, they had two options, basically. They could wait and make the trip to New Orleans and hopefully see a doctor there, or they could see a local voodoo healer. With no other choice, the 
German immigrants rely on local voodoo priestess Julia Brown for their medical needs. Julia Brown was a, a local voodoo root worker and practitioner for their me medicinal needs. She used uh, voodoo rituals as well as the herbal medicine to do her healing. And the rumor has it that she was not only a, a practitioner of this herbal medicine, but she was a powerful voodoo priestess. With a strong African and Haitian influence in the southern Louisiana area, voodoo is about as commonplace here as gumbo and just as complex. There's a lot of fear and superstition surrounding voodoo, but the fact of the matter is voodoo is a religion. Voodoo originated in West Africa and it traveled with the slave trade to the New World. And because of the greater freedoms that existed in Southeast Louisiana, it was allowed to take root. Today in popular culture, voodoo is often portrayed as evil magic. But back in 1915 in this part of the country, it is cautiously accepted as a faith based on the earth and spirits. In the voodoo tradition, the spirit world and the physical world coexist. So there's always this interaction of our world and their world. And in voodoo, only the most devout and powerful practitioners are given the title priestess. A voodoo priestess like Julia Brown would know the, the spirit essence of it all and should be able to talk to the spirits of the nature that all surrounded her. And according to legend, Julia Brown uses that nature to her and the townspeople's benefit, treating aches and pains with anything at her disposal. It was very, very common that they would have used plants, herbs that were indigenous to the area. <coughs> White willow bark, for instance, it was a pain reliever and also an anti-inflammatory. And it grew naturally in the swamps near Frenier. So the medicine at the time seemed to be magic to these people. Obviously, the people of Frenier depended upon her. She must have been successful in her treatment, so they wouldn't have kept coming back. Julia Brown is paid handsomely for her services. And according to historical records, she becomes a large landowner in the area. The community accepted her, and over the years, started calling her Aunt Julia Brown. But still in all, they were kind of scared of her. Julia Brown having that kind of power that's so distinct made her stand out and made her perhaps somebody to be just a little bit wary of because, you know, someone who controls things that you can't and that you don't have a good handle on is unsettling. And that unsettling feeling only intensifies when Aunt Julia Brown sings her songs. Legend has it she would sit on her porch and she would sing these strange little songs. But one song in particular that she sang over and over again contained lyrics that, that said something about when she died, she was going to take the whole town with her. I'll take the whole town with me when I die. <laughs> and she'd laugh. And this made people a little bit frightened and a little bit unnerved about what she might have in store for them. When I die, I'll take the whole town with me. After all, if Julia Brown has the power to heal, perhaps she also has the power to destroy. I don't think anybody's really sure what Julia's intentions were when she sang this song. Maybe it was a curse, maybe it was a prophecy, but they were very fearful for what might lie ahead of them when she did pass away. And for the people of Frenier, their fears are realized when Julia Brown dies on September 28th, 1915. Finally, after years of healing the community, she passed away in natural causes. It left the town wondering if her song would ever come true. <laughs> of course.
According to legend, it will. She was far more powerful than anyone ever expected. Everyone watched in horror, but there was nothing that they could do. A century after its demise, the once thriving community of Frenier is now merely a small strip of sandy lakefront known as Frenier Beach. Frenier now, it, there's nothing. There's a, a boat launch there, and they have a restaurant there, and they've got a few houses scattered around. But there's nothing but swamp. That's all you see is just swamp. And legend has it, it's because of the curse of one woman, and that was uh, Aunt Julia Brown. And this legend begins on September 28th, 1915, when voodoo priestess Julia Brown dies. She said that when she died, she wanted to take the whole town with her. So Julia died, and they were afraid of what would happen next. On September 28th, when Julia Brown passed away, the weather was starting to go downhill. The skies were getting cloudy, uh, the wind was picking up, the water was beginning to really become rough over the western side of Lake Pontchartrain. Many residents question if this nasty turn in the weather is the work of Mother Nature or Julia Brown. After all, both seem equally plausible. They were really no strangers to strong tropical systems. A few years before, in 1909, a Category 3 storm produced winds of up to 80 miles per hour and a 15-foot storm surge. And so they knew what could happen, but they still had no way of knowing what was going to be coming in. The people of Frenier are basically at the unruly mercy of the elements. The local weather agencies would see the winds picking up, would know that the clouds were moving in, the water was rising, they would know a storm was on the way, but it was still a large amount of guesswork involved at the time to determine exactly how bad that storm would be. Even if forecasters were capable of creating an accurate storm warning, residents in the isolated swamplands of Frenier likely would not perceive it, which is exactly what happened that September of 1915. A few days before Julia Brown died, in the Times-Picayune newspaper, there was an article that, that came out. It was saying about they was gonna have a bad hurricane, but the newspaper was usually a, a week, at least a week old before they got it. Residents have no idea that a monster storm is hurling towards them. And by 4 p.m. the following day, the weather turns from bad to worse. Despite their worry, mourners hedge their bets and trudge through the wicked weather to pay their respects at the wake for the powerful voodoo priestess, Julia Brown. People came from everywhere. Some went maybe out of respect. Some went because they were still kind of leery or scared. Maybe if they didn't come, the song that she sang was gonna come true. But as the storm rages outside Julia Brown's window, the mourners realize their efforts to respect her spirit are futile. Julia Brown is more powerful than anyone expected, both then and even now. Nearly a hundred years later, folks still talk about Julia Brown's curse. For Jeremy Leonard, he's always been curious about the voodoo priestess. It's a curiosity that would eventually get the best of him. I've always been interested in ghost stories, and down here in southern Louisiana, it seems that you hear them everywhere, but I have never been so terrified as to where I decided to mess with the curse of Julia Brown. And it all starts when Jeremy decides to go looking for the grave of Julia Brown. I had heard that the grave site was haunted, so I decided to go down there one night, find out what it was all about. All right, you ready to do this? Man, I don't know. Well, let's see what all the fuss is about. At first, it felt like any other swamp in Louisiana, but it was like the further we went into the swamp, the quieter it got. And it was a real eerie feeling. Man, I don't know about this. Oh, come on. 
Let's go. We walk deep into the swamp, and we come up on a spot where there was a black wrought iron fence sticking out of the ground. It was the remnants of a fence that went all the way around the cemetery in the early days. But through numerous hurricanes, that had all been washed away. At this point, I was excited because we had finally found it. This is the place. And I've heard through stories that Julia Brown was supposedly a voodoo priestess. And I wanted to see if we can get a reaction out of her. When it comes to the curse of Julia Brown, Jeremy is about to learn a valuable lesson. Don't play with fire unless you want to get burned. Now I know a voodoo doll was a bad idea. In 1915, voodoo priestess Julia Brown is said to have played a role in the demise of Frenier, Louisiana. And folks around here believe it wholeheartedly. To just think that something like that can happen, and, and if it was from the curse, for someone to have that much power to be able to take a whole town and the people with her, it's terrifying. And local resident Jeremy Leonard can relate. He has experienced the power of Julia Brown's voodoo. I wouldn't say that I was a huge believer in the paranormal, but then I experienced the wrath of Julia Brown, and that's when it all changed. Legend says that Julia Brown was voodoo priestess. So I brought a voodoo doll to see if I could connect with her in any way. And I held it up in the air and I said, Julia Brown, see what I brought? Nothing happened. Julia Brown, show yourself. That's when the atmosphere started to change. I don't know. Ow. What was it? All of a sudden, I felt this huge burning sensation on my shoulder. What's going on? What's going on? It felt like I was on fire. It brought me to my knees. I don't know. Can you check my back? I remember my friend saying, dude, I don't think you want to see this. What is it? Did something scratched you. What? You've been scratched. The burning was so urgent, I knew it was the work of something that was very angry. I, I, I couldn't take it. I had to leave. Let's get out of here. I know, without a doubt, there are things in this world that we can't explain. And you talk about curses, voodoo, black magic. Is it real? Yeah, it's real. I know firsthand. Jeremy's lucky. He was able to escape Julia Brown's curse. But on September 29th, 1915, the residents of the small farming community of Frenier aren't as fortunate. As they gather together at Julia Brown's funeral, the weather outside turns ominous. I would imagine that everybody in there, they were actually terrified and scared. The coffin was laid out in the living room and the wind would just whistle coming through the cracks in the houses and it was blowing the candles and they was flickering. As the words of Julia Brown's song echo in the backs of their minds, Frenier residents tremble with the fear that her plan to take the whole town with her is coming true. As the lid was closed on the coffin, they could feel the storm brewing and they were shaking in their boots. Everybody in there that was thinking, could this be what she was talking about? Or are we gonna die? For many, the answer is yes. Rain pelts the roof, wind rips through walls, and water seeps in over the floors. Before long, Mother Nature rips through the house. The lake started rising real fast, and the water 
started hitting actually came up and the waves was hitting against the house so people was getting scared and finally waves hit against the house and knocked it completely down there was really no way to protect themselves all the people at the time could do is just hold on and try to ride out the storm as best they could according to legend the house swallows everyone inside except for one there was one man that was attending the wake that managed to get out alive he climbed a cypress tree and he watched his friends just grabbing on the boards and trying to float and the ones that didn't have anything they just they just went under they all died just like she said it would slowly the storm tears through the entire town of Frenier. It demolishes almost every structure in its path. The storm surge was about 12 to 14 feet on the western side of Lake Pontchartrain. So the water was pushing in, washing away people's homes, washing away parts of the railroad, flooding all the cropland, and there was really nowhere that was safe from the storm at the time. For hours, the storm pummels Frenier until nothing is left. Local historians say nearly everyone attending Julia Brown's funeral dies that day. Nearly a quarter of the entire population of Frenier. The storm that hit Frenier on September 29th of 1915 later became known as the Great West Indies Storm. It was a Category 3 storm with winds estimated around 130 miles per hour and ranks as the sixth highest recorded wind speed with a hurricane here in southeast Louisiana. The slow crawl of the 1915 hurricane makes the storm surge over Lake Pontchartrain all the more deadly. There was extra time for the winds and then, of course, the rain to wreak havoc for at least 12 to 15 hours. That's a lot of water piling up on the western side of Lake Pontchartrain. It doesn't have anywhere to go and eventually flooded that entire area. As the water recedes, all that is left of Frenier are flattened piles of rubble and ruin. This was two sets of tracks, and you see that the iron railings, the tracks itself, completely gone. It washed them away. This is a picture where the train cars was actually washed off of the track for 20 miles down this railroad track. Every single place was washed away. Every house, everything, you can't even imagine it. Whether Julia Brown had had a premonition, knowing that the day she died, the town was gonna go with her, or whether she called it through song, we'll probably never know. But the town was demolished, it was destroyed. Even today, it's clear to see the effects of the 1915 storm were not only immense, they were lasting. None of this is what it used to be. And you had houses that were scattered out, maybe a block apart, some a half a mile apart, and uh, all of them's gone. Two days after the storm, with the entire area covered in debris and sludge from the flood, Survivors have nowhere to bury their loved ones, so they are forced to improvise. They took and picked up boards from the houses, and they built rafts, and they put the dead bodies on, on the rafts, and they pulled them into the swamp. People say Julia Brown's body is recovered and laid to rest with the other storm victims in the swamp. While others believe Julia Brown's spirit isn't resting at all. Not only is she haunting the swamps, many also believe Julia Brown's power from beyond the grave is preventing Frenier from ever thriving again. It was certainly seemed that Julia Brown never intended for that town to ever come back. The whole area seems to be cursed. Nearly a century ago, in 1915, the town of Frenier, Louisiana, was destroyed by a vicious hurricane. The victims were laid to rest deep in the swamp, where some residents believe the spirits of the dead still roam today. 
just hang out in the woods at overnight and you, you then come talk to me. <laughs> Get lost out there, you hear you hear sounds and you hear stuff that you don't normally hear during the day. It's it's definitely weird. <laughs> My brother when he was young went down to that swamp in Frenier as a joke one night. Well it wasn't too much of a joke because he come back and he said he would never go there again. Something scared him. Don't know what it was, but something scared him. Over the years, the curse of Julia Brown has had many interpretations among Frenier locals. Even Wayne Norwood isn't sure. Maybe it was because she loved the people so much when she died, she wanted to take them with her. On the other hand, she might have had some bad experiences there, and whenever she died, she wanted to take everybody with her and just end everything. No matter what her intentions was, by singing a song over and over, it cast some type of spell. And many believe her promise to take the whole town with her has lasted well past the storm of 1915. Over the last century, we've had storm after storm after storm. So it was certainly seen to many people that Julia Brown never intended for that town to ever come back. The whole area seems to be cursed. In the past 100 years, since the storm of 1915, hurricanes have continued to wreak havoc in the Gulf region. And Frenier is right in the danger zone. Southeast Louisiana is very susceptible to these dangerous storms. It's all because of the flow in the atmosphere, because of the high pressure area over the island of Bermuda that basically funnels stronger storms right into the northern Gulf of Mexico. We also have a current of water that oftentimes reaches well above 90 degrees, and warm water helps to strengthen storms. It can make them more intense. So all those ingredients really come together to make southeast Louisiana a very dangerous spot when it comes to hurricanes making landfall. The strong storms have made it harder for Frenier to recuperate. The closest that uh, Fenier ever come to be, come back to life, is in 1931 when they built a Fenier Beach Resort. But the Fenier Beach Resort doesn't last long. It was a nice vacation spot uh, for local people around the region to go to. Unfortunately, it just kept getting knocked down time and time again. There's a strong hurricane in 1947. It knocked out a lot of those buildings in Frenier. Uh, of course, Hurricane Betsy, Billion Dollar Betsy, as it's called, was the first storm to ever produce a billion dollars worth of damage. And that came on shore and created just catastrophic damage across southeast Louisiana. So, unfortunately, as attempts were being made to rebuild Frenier and revitalize that area, uh, Mother Nature was not cooperating. Or... Perhaps it's Julia Brown who is not cooperating. No matter how hard anyone tries to rebuild the area, Julia doesn't want to let it happen. She will not allow that town to live without her. And no one knows this better than architectural designer Murray Daniels. He makes it a personal mission to revive Frenier, curse or no curse. A lot of people told me not to build here because of the curse of Julia Brown. But after purchasing an area of the shoreline where Frenier once stood, I wanted to build a restaurant and a home here to start the community regrowth back to where I thought it should be. So Murray and a team of engineers get to work rebuilding the town, literally. I ended up building the land out 476 feet. We built it up seven to eight foot above sea level. And I designed my restaurant with the engineering that was strong enough to withstand the storms in this area. I was convinced that it would probably uh, withstand anything that the weather threw at me. But the curse of Julia Brown is not easily challenged. And anyone standing in the way is sure to suffer dire consequences. We woke up to a nightmare. I'd never seen anything like it. <laughs> Hurricane.
hurricanes are a fact of life for the residents of Frenier Beach, Louisiana. And some locals believe the recurrent storms are a direct result of a century-old voodoo curse. You go to any other place, a snowstorm, uh, an earthquake, or whatever, it happens very rarely, but here it continues to happen. So, uh, I think Julia Brown's curse holds true. And no one has fought harder to rebuild a small piece of this town than architectural designer Murray Daniels. I've built a lot of things a lot of places, and this has been one of the most difficult things my wife and I have ever built. I'm not going anywhere, but it doesn't mean old Julie hadn't tried. On August 28, 2012, Murray and his wife finally face off with Julia Brown's century-old curse. Isaac was barely a hurricane, just, just up from a tropical storm. The reports were saying that it would probably bring three to four foot of storm surge with it, which wouldn't even allow water to be on the land out here that I built up seven feet. So what do you think? I don't know. It's not too bad. It was too bad to me. Yeah. And my wife, Dottie, and I didn't think it was that big of a deal, so we decided to stay. We went to bed thinking that it wasn't going to be anything worse than a series of bad thunderstorms. Murray! In the morning, Dottie woke me up from a dead sleep. Murray, what is it? She made the comment, what is that noise? What is it, called? couldn't see it through any window because it was just slamming rain. Oh my God, I gotta get out of here. It was just the howling of the wind, the lightning, the rain. I ran down the stairway and realized that the water was up three or four feet below the house already. And there were two 500 gallon propane tanks that had lodged underneath our house spewing liquid propane. At that moment, I knew I had to act fast. Anything could have made a spark. If the tanks were to explode, I knew we would die. And I knew that the restaurant was a better place to be. It was built post-Katrina, which was built to a much stronger set of standards than the home was. So I strapped a life preserver on my wife, tied a rope from me to her, and started the 150-foot trek through the water and the waves to get to the restaurant. It was amazing that we didn't both drown. The next day, I couldn't believe my eyes. Water was 12 and a half foot deep everywhere around us. The lake had swallowed the entire community of Frenier. With his beloved Frenier Beach underwater, Murray helplessly watches the area wash away into the swamps once again. But thanks to their durable construction, Murray's restaurant and home survived Hurricane Isaac, but little else does. Hurricane Isaac produced over $2 billion worth of damage. Uh, five people were killed, flooding in areas that really usually don't see flooding. So Isaac was a very destructive storm. And it won't be the last storm to hit for near either, especially if Aunt Julia has anything to say about it. What I have learned since I've been back here is that I respect the curse of Julia Brown. There's no doubt there will be more storms back here, but all I can say is we will do our best to continue for near. With every new storm that hits Frenier Beach, the legend of Julia Brown grows a little larger. This legend in particular is compelling because Julia Brown is a historical figure. We know she lived. We've got those records. The storm <laughs> did happen. We've got those records. And so the power of a very real and tangible set of circumstances and details lining up so perfectly lends particular credence to the story. The story may be grounded in history, but one question still lingers. What were Julia Brown's intentions? People fear that Julia Brown is preventing 
the town of Rainier from ever rebuilding. Which maybe she doesn't want it to rebuild because just more will die. Storms keep coming. They keep hitting there. Maybe it's her odd way of protecting from the other side. We'll never know. Regardless of the answer, something else that always rings true is that ferocious storms and the story of Julia Brown go hand in hand. Weather has always played a big role in legends, and it's because it's something that just sort of ties into our daily lives and ties into the history of the area, uh, the cultures of the area. The way people live their lives are all impacted by weather. Up to the whole town with me. <laughs> the pivotal piece of this legend is the synergy between this prophetic song that people remember Julia singing on her porch as prophecy, and then the fulfillment of that prophecy on the day of her funeral. This wasn't a storm like any other storm. Uh, it's a storm that the town never fully recovered from. Having something that cataclysmic go along with a prediction of exactly that scenario, it's, it's just too perfect. It's, it's too perfect to not make that connection and continue to tell that story as local history, as much as local legend. And despite the struggle to remain afloat, today, the residents of Frenier Beach will continue to weather the storms. I have heard that this area was cursed. Um, I don't know much about it, but I know that it doesn't scare me to live here. It's home to me, so it doesn't scare me. I think you grow up here and have a love for it. I can go anywhere around the world, but you, you always come back here because you have a love for it. We ain't not going nowhere. We're gonna keep catching crabs. People gotta eat. Whether Julia Brown played a hand in the destruction of Frenier will never be proven, but her legend will most likely be tied to this area forever.